all right, let's test this out. Let's see how high this value will make me jump. And, uh, ooh, oh my God. This is the part three tutorial in the ongoing C++ programming series where we are developing a playable character using, well, C++. In the previous video, we added sprinting and walking to our character. Now we're gonna add jumping. So I, I hate it when you play a game and you go to jump and you can't. I, it's so limiting, it's so restricting. So let's add some jumping. It's just like last time, we're gonna be using Visual Studio. Any version works just fine. And of course, CryEngine 5.7 LTS. To get started, we are going to be opening up our solution in our project's main directory. And within our solution, like before, we are going to be opening up our game.sln or game solution. Once your solution is open, we're going to want to open up our handy player.h and our player.cpp. And it's going to be looking just like how we left it in our previous tutorial. So we're adding bits as we go in this series and Let's get started with adding our jumping. The first thing we want to do is add some member variables. So at the bottom, we're going to add a float. And we're going to give this m underscore for member, and we'll name it jump height. And we'll close that off. And we're going to be using this member variable throughout the tutorial. So jump height, and we'll go up, and we'll add the add member line as well so that we can modify the value within CryEngine. We're just going to copy an existing one and I'm going to rename the M run speed. I'll just name this jump height. And of course, I'm going to name the ID PJH for player jump height. I'm going to do player jump height again. Player jump height for the name that shows up in CryEngine. And for the description, we're going to do, well, sets the player's jump height. Now with our add member line added and our member variable added, we still want to add one more thing. Now within our player.cpp, we're going to go down to our inputs under our initialize input, and we're going to copy and paste an existing register action and bind action line, and paste it underneath our, I'm going to put it underneath the sprint because I like to keep the player movement separate from the mouse controls, which you can see underneath. And I'll just rename this player. Uh, and jump will be the name of it. So just jump and jump. For the E, AID, keyboard mouse, I'm going to do EKI space. So that when we hit space, we jump. And for the lambda, well, I'm going to erase this. It's going to look similar to what's up here in our sprints that we did last tutorial. So this is going to be somewhat similar in the process. I'm going to hit enter and in these curly braces underneath, I'm going to start typing out an if statement that we're going to be using. So another set of squiggly braces, curly braces. And what we're going to be adding here within this Lambda is going to be an if statement. And this if statement is going to check to see if we're on the ground. And if we are on the ground, we'll, we'll be able to jump. And if we're not on the ground, well, we won't be able to jump because if we didn't add this if statement and we built this as is, you could technically just keep spamming the space key until, you know, you are in low Earth orbit. So we want to prevent that. Um, and we just want to be able to make it so that when you press jump, you can't jump again until you're on the ground. And I'm going to do if open parentheses MP character controller. And we're going to do a pointer, so an arrow, and we're going to point that to an is on ground, which checks in the C character controller if it's on the ground. If we hit F12 on our C character controller and we scroll down, we can actually search for ground and we can see what this is specifically. So we can see here it's a bool, is on ground, and this is just checking to see if, well, the player's on the ground, and if the player is on ground, it will do what we want to in the Lambda. So we want to have that if statement so that we can prevent spamming the space key and flying into space because, well, if it doesn't check if you're on the ground, well, you can just triple quad jump until you hit the clouds. So uh, within the curly braces underneath, I'm going to do MP character controller. And then we're going to point that to an add velocity. And then we're going to do open parentheses, a vec3. 
And within a new set of parentheses, we're going to do 0.0f, 0.0f, which is just 0, a fancy way of saying 0. And we have our m jump height, so our member variable. So we're going to add the member variable at the end as the third, and we're going to close that with the parentheses. Now, you may be wondering why our m jump height is here at the very end, and that's because, well, we have a vec3, which is an x, a y, and a z axis. We want to apply our m jump height to the z axis, which is our up and down axis, and we want to make sure that when we have our value applied to it and we hit the space bar, this add velocity is only applied to our z axis, jumping us up. Now, you can hit Control shift s and save this. Well, you should, always. And I'm going to build this out, and we're going to see if we can get to that island in the map that I've been making. Sorry, there's a, there's a cat outside. It's staring at me. Hello, cat. So, all right, we have our project open here, and I'm going to give this a go. So if I find this character controller and we go down here into the properties of it, uh, we can see that we can modify the value, right? So we have our player jump height, and I'm going to set this to a ridiculous value, so I'm going to do 100. All right, let's test this out. Let's see how high this value will make me jump. And, uh, ooh, oh my god, okay, that's too high. All right, let's tone that one down. So that was more of a launch than a jump. Um, I could see, again, that being cool in a game, if you had like a plume of smoke and you just launched yourself as you... So again, style is important, and I'm still falling. And... Doosh! All right, so I'm on the ground. Now, I'm going to set this to a more realistic value. I think 2 is usually a good one. That's what I like to use. It's not too high, but it gives you a little bit of a jump. Now that we've added our jumping, there's another property within the character controller that I think is worth setting a value to. And we've already added this in the past, but since we didn't have jumping previously, we didn't talk about it. But now that we have jumping, we are going to go up here in the properties, and at the very top of our character controller, you'll see something called the air control ratio. Now what this does is it gives your player a little bit of control once you jump, once you're in the air, so that you can adjust your landing, uh, and kind of steer your character while you've left the ground. Now, some games you've played, they don't have any of this. You jump and you commit to the jump. Other games, you feel like you're on a jetpack when you jump. You have, like, total control of, of movement in the air. I find, personally, that a value of 0 0.1, which is what I'm going to put here, is kind of a perfect balance. I think it gives me just enough movement while I'm in the air to maybe adjust a landing, uh, but... Not enough to make it feel like it's unbelievable, right? Because you can't really move when you're in the air. Uh, you can kind of shift your momentum a little bit, but it's kind of different. So I set that to 0 0.1. I think it's better than 0. 0 feels a little stiff, and that should help me get up on this log. So let's test this out. I'm going to let's try and knock this log over first and see if we can jump on it. So uh, knock it over. Oh, look at that water. All right, so jump on. So I'm going to sprint and jump to get to at least the sand on the beach here. We're close to it. Yeah, I made it. I got my feet wet, but it's not deep water, so I'll take it. And let's see what's... We got some med kits. We got some sodas. Good stuff, good stuff. This nice little pond here. We also have this ominous, creepy, glowing cellar door. Cool, very cool. Uh, I wonder what's inside. Probably my hopes and dreams. Uh, and we have a shrine here. So a shrine to commemorate and remember my hopes and dreams, which have been lost. So that's wonderful. We have a whole package on this island. I mean, it's a really great island. If I see a fun opportunity, I jump on it, you know. Oh, my God. Uh, that's probably a good sign for me to uh, wrap this up. So hope that this helped. Uh, now we have a well-rounded, basic, playable character. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the side. Which side? The flip side. Why? Why, why, why do I make those jokes?